the electric motors and hybrid electric cars, they work with alternating current. But wait a minute, you cannot store alternating current in a high voltage battery. So how in the world you turn the DC voltage that you store in a battery to alternating current in order to run the electric motor? This is an electric drill, right? This is a battery. If I hook it up over here, and then let's say I begin to run the electric motor at a little speed. Let's say that I want to increase my speed. What am I do? I increase the intensity. But wait a minute, if I take this apart, you will see a three-phase alternating current electric motor. So what do you think this trigger is very different from your electric vehicle's accelerator? Well, the component that makes this possible is exactly, this is the famous inverter assembly that every single hybrid and electric vehicle will have. But what is it and what does it do? Well, it takes the DC power from the high voltage battery and does an inversion and turns into a simulated alternating current via pulse width modulation. The only way to understand this, we're gonna take apart this inverter assembly from a third generation to a hybrid car. And let me just remind you, that if you subscribe into our YouTube channel, you are now participating to win a Launch Scantle C-Reader T only for Toyota, totally free. This could be yours. Just go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And then of course, in this channel as well. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. The inverter assembly in hybrid electric vehicles. We have the main connection with power and electronics to control every single thing that's happening from the electric motor. You need a bunch of communication cable. Next, if we turn it back, over here, we have to consider that hybrid cars uses two electric motors, all right? So MG1, that's the one that drives the starter generator, and MG2, which is the main power electric motor that runs the vehicle together with internal combustion engine. So we have one and two three-phase alternating current main connection. And we also have the main positive and negative that comes from the high voltage battery via this giant cable. There's another connection that we have over here, which is a DC output, this DC output is the main DC power that comes directly from the high voltage battery to the AC compressor that passes through this high voltage fuse. So for example, if by chance something happens, a short circuit in the AC compressor, there is this main fuse that by chance if it blows, nothing will happen to the high voltage system that drives the electric motors because the circuit of the air conditioning is completely open. Meaning that yes, the vehicle can drive without the AC compressor. So it's time to open this up, here we go. Okay, here it is. Let me take it out with much careful. Inside the inverter assembly, we find one of the components, which is exactly why you need to run safety protocols in the hybrid electric vehicle training program, because can you see the size of this main capacitor? Well, this is the capacitor that filters and smooth the high voltage coming from the battery, so you will be able to ride smooth the high voltage electric motors as well as high voltage components. Every time you shut down the vehicle, there's a discharge protocol that uses this, this charge resistor will create a short circuit inside the capacitor to discharge the huge amount of power that this unit is capable to hold. So the next component is the current sensor. Let me take it out. If you hook up a scan tool in your hybrid electric car, you're able to monitor the amount of power that the vehicle is consuming as well the amount of current. So how do you do that? Well, by using this four individual Hall effect current sensors that measures each one of the phases of the electric motor, which is, I would say, yes, it's a replaceable part. Although I'll be very honest, I never see this current sensor back, at least in Toyota. So we have the main power control module. That's the one that receives the information as well as the one that sends the information for the commanding board that controls the IGBT. So what are the IGBTs? I gotta show you. Let me take it out, here we go. So just to give you a heads up, the IGBT are the insulated gateway bipolar transistor or the high speed fast switches that turns the DC power into a simulated pulse width modulation or an alternating current, high voltage power. And now we have access to the main IGBT covered by this. So let me take it out. So once I remove the upper cover, we have fully access to the insulated bipolar gateway transistor or in other words these are the high voltage power semiconductors that made possible dc into ac conversion or inversion i'll leave it up to you now jose how many transistors do we have over here and what is the function of each one of them let me just remind you that we have 
two electric motors in each one of the Toyota hybrid cars, as well as a reactor. The reactor is the component or a transformer that turns high voltage DC into higher voltage DC. In Toyota hybrid cars, you're using a 200 volt or 160 volt battery, but when you see the amount of power that reaches the electric motor, it's about 1600 volt. But here inside the IGBT assembly, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six big IGBTs. As you can see, each one of them are two IGBTs connected in parallel. Well, these are individual phases for the high voltage motor generator number two. In other words, the one that drives the vehicle. This is why we use it, the biggest IGBT. Next, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six individual IGBT, but it's only single for the motor generator number one, starter generator and CVT controller. And then here, we see a little mess over here, but the IGBTs in this part are actually bigger and we only have two. Well, because this is the DC line that turns high voltage DC into higher voltage DC by reaction or induction in this case. And Jose, is it possible this IGBT is to fail? Well, see for yourself. What in the world happened here? Let's take it out and I'll show you what happened to this inverter assembly. Have you guys realized that the inverter assembling in most of the hybrid cars, they have a couple of coolant connection, which means yes, coolant flows inside the IGBT assembly. Simple because if you want to create this type of conversion, you need to have a heat exchanger, or therefore the IGBTs will blow. Or that's why we're using this coolant fin. So this is just a loop of coolant that flows in here. Now take a look at this thermal paste because under this component, we also have the reactor as well as the DC, the DC converter. We have another video talking about the DC to DC converter. The IGBTs are directly connected to this heat exchanger, which is exactly what happened in this case. The hybrid system, small plastic coolant pump simply fails. The vehicle was driving, then of course, the boost converter is the one that fails because it's the one that takes the stress the most. Why? Because remember, this one turns 200 volts into 600 volts. You can see that this individual IGBT semiconductor, they have like some sort of a thermal gel. These are actually one of the best IGBTs that you can find, the ones that are covered with thermal gel. Some of the other cars are, use, are just using a silicon cover, regular big MOSFET transistor, but I believe the thermal gel cover is the most efficient heat exchange. But right here, these IGBTs are completely short or blow up. They overheat and then of course they explode it inside. And at the end of the day, if this happens to, for example, your Toyota hybrid car, you will get immediately diagnostic trouble code P0A94, that stands for DC to DC converter or boost converter performance. And then of course, your vehicle is going absolutely nowhere. In some Toyota hybrid cars, there is a replacement assembly for the IGBTs as well. Well, basic electronics taken to the automotive world. How do we turn DC into alternating current? Well, that is the reason that we have big high power transistor to switch those DC into a pulse width modulation or controlled frequency signal so you can simulate it high voltage alternating current. It's not really alternating current. And once you receive your DC for each electric motor, you will have an output for each electric motor by each individual phase that will create a sine wave or a control sine wave in order to drive the electric motor like this. So I really hope you enjoy this video, this masterclass. This and more are the things that we're studying in our hybrid electric vehicle training program. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more, stick around for more tips. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.